All right, so uh, next lesson is on, again, so we're going to be solving quadratic equations, but by a different method called completing the square. Okay, so uh, completing the square, we actually have done uh, in the previous chapter, or sorry, previous, in the, in the I guess, last week, uh, where we guys changed from uh, standard form to vertex form. Okay, so completing the square uh, is also a method we can use to solve these equations. All right, so um, that being said, I'm going to start off here by uh, doing a little bit of review uh, from the uh, from the previous lesson. And what we're going to do here is we're going to just solve this equation, quadratic equation, uh, by factoring. Okay. So when we solve by factoring, we want two numbers that multiply to positive 20. Okay, the last number, and add to negative 12. Okay, the, the number in front of the x. Uh, so in this case, two numbers that multiply to positive 20 add to negative 12 would be negative 10 and negative 2. All right, so um, basically what we're going to do here is we're just going to place those numbers inside the bracket. So it's going to be x minus 10 times x minus 2 equals 0. All right, and then once we have it factored, uh, we're going to take each one of these bracket brackets here, set them individually equal to 0, and solve them. Okay, so I'm going to move the negative 10 over to the other side. So x equals positive 10 is one solution. Then over here, when I move the negative 2 over, x is going to equal positive 2 is the other solution. All right. And as well, um, we can also check our answers. Okay, so um, I'll do that quickly here. So you, what you want to do is you want to check them individually. So the first one here, when I got x equals 10, I'm going to plug that into the... Uh, original equation here. So then I got 10 squared minus 12 times 10 uh, plus 20. And I'm going to make sure this thing equals 0. All right, so 10 squared is 100. 100 minus 120 plus 20 equals, all right, 0. Uh, so what do we have here? We have 100 minus 120 is negative 20, negative 20 plus 20 is equal to zero. So we got zero equals zero. And as well, if I try the other one, x equals two, and plug that in. Uh, again, we have two squared minus 12 times two uh, plus 20 equals zero. And let's see here what we get here. Four minus uh, 12 times two is 24 plus 20 equals zero. 4 minus 24 is negative 20. Negative 20 plus 20 is 0. So again, you get that right. Okay, so um, yeah, so on a test, make sure you get in the habit of checking your answers, right? Even though this part over here, checking isn't required, uh, it's a good idea to check your answers. All right, so for all equations, uh, any type of equation, actually, once you get an answer, um, you, can, you can always check your answers by plugging them in and making sure the left side matches the right. Okay. All right, so here we got x equals 10, x equals 2. Those are our answers uh, when we factor it. All right, so on to, to the lesson for today, which is I'm going to show you how to solve this equation using a different method called completing the square. Now, what you'll notice here in the first example is that I use the exact same equation as I did here in the fact that we solved by factoring. So we know the answers have to be 10 and 2. All right, but I'm just going to show you the a different way of getting that answer. Okay, so you uh, you also need to know how to how to solve the equations by this method called completing the square. All right. So uh, basically what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to change this from this equation. So you notice here this equation here is in standard form. So basically what we want to do is we want to complete the square and change this to vertex form. Okay, as you guys uh, by now should be able to do. All right. Um, so again, uh, we want to change this over to vertex form by completing the square. So using that method. So again, remember the first step here is you're going to factor out the number in front of the x squared, but in this case there's just a 1 there. So we can go straight to the next step, which was to take the number in front of the x, which in this case is 12. And then what we're going to do is we're going to divide it by 2 and square it. And that will give us the number that we're going to add and subtract. All right, so this is 6 squared, which is 36. All right, so... After the uh, negative 12x, I'm going to add 36 and subtract 36. Uh, what I'm also going to do is just set this into brackets here. 
All right, and then I got plus 20. Okay, again, this is equal to zero. All right, so next, after that, once we've done, figure out what we're gonna add and subtract, pull the negative one out. But as we do that, we need to multiply it by the leading coefficient. But in this case, the leading coefficient is one. So there really isn't much, there really isn't anything to multiply it by. All right, so next step here, we got x squared minus 12x plus 36. Uh, and then we have, uh, so that thing is in brackets. And we got plus 20 minus six equals zero. No, sorry, minus 36. All right, so, um, all right, so once you factor this one here, so again, two numbers I multiply it as 36 at the negative 12, uh, it's gonna be x minus six and x minus six. So in other words, this is x minus six squared. Or hopefully by now you can see that when we do complete the square, the pattern is that this is when this is negative 12x, this is going to be half of that number always. Okay. And if I combine these two together, I get negative 16 equals zero. Once you get to this point, this uh, again, this is how this uh, this quadratic function would look like if it was in vertex form. So once you get to this point, what you'll notice is that there's only one x here now. Right, so it is possible to isolate that x, and this is why we're completing the square. All right, so uh, so now all we're going to do here is just solve for x. I'm going to take the negative 16. All right, so negative 16. Hold on here, I'm picking them up. All right, take the negative 16, move it over to the other side. So I get uh, x minus 6 squared equals positive 16. And then next up, the opposite of squaring is the square root. So we're going to square root both sides. But however, when we're getting rid of this square, it's both a positive and negative square root. Okay, so plus and minus on both sides. Um, okay, so the reason for that is, like, if I asked you, um, uh, if you know, what number do you square to get a certain number? It would have to include both a positive and negative of, uh, square root of that number. All right. Okay, so anyways, this, the x plus and minus square root cancels off with the square here, so you're left with x minus 6. And over here, we got plus and minus the square root of 16, which is 4. Okay. And then final step here, I'm just going to move the negative 6 over to this side. So we get x equals plus and minus 4 uh, plus 6. Okay, now this here, what happens when you get to this point is we actually can split this up into solving two answers, all right? So uh, the first one here, x is gonna equal positive four plus six, which is equal to positive 10. And then on the second one here, I'm just gonna write x is gonna equal negative four plus six, which is equal to two. All right, so what you see here is now that we get the two answers that we got, same two answers as we got when we solved it by factoring. Okay, so this is just another method, completing the square, and so on. All right, I just realized I, actually, I think I want to do this here. Just to make it clear, more obvious. When we split up, it's both a, one, one would be the positive of the number, and the other one would be negative of that number. All right, so cool. So that's uh, completing the square. Basically, you change it to vertex form and then isolate the x. Okay, so let's do another one here. Um, and again, we're going to, I guess, I've included the factoring part as a review. All right, so we want to determine the roots of 2x squared minus 7 or minus 12x minus 7 equals 0. Uh, so a little bit of terminology. Okay, I want to ask you to determine the roots. It's just another way of saying, fancy way of saying, just solve it. <laughs> All right, so you meant. You might see uh, some questions where it says determine the roots. It's the same as saying just solve it. All right. So again, we're going to solve it by factoring. Okay. So this time, um, uh, okay. So let's just write that up here. So 2x squared minus 12x minus 7 equals 0. All right. So for this one here, actually, yeah, I guess I include this one uh, by factoring. It's a little bit of review as well because I want to work with one with when we have a number in front of the x squared. Okay, so your first step is to look for GCF, but between 2, 12, and, neg and 7, there is no greatest common factor. So we're stuck with the 2 out in front. So this time we want two numbers that multiply to negative 14, right, because that's 2 times negative 7, and add to negative 12. 
All right, so that here um, would be, all right, so off the top of my head, I can't really uh, think of anything. So let's actually list off the factors of 14. So obviously I got one and 14, I got two and seven, and that's it, right? Yes. Now, since it's a negative product, um, again, these can be negative or that one could be positive, 14 could be negative, um, the two can be positive and the seven can be negative. All right. Now, the thing is, when I add these together, right, that's uh, this is positive 13, that's negative 13. This is po positive five, that's negative five. So none of these actually work when we try to factor because okay, the combinations don't add to negative 12. So what that means is this thing can't be factored. Now, this is the thing, though. Even if an equation cannot be factored or solved by factoring, it is actually possible for it to have a solution. All right. Uh, so uh, factoring works in certain cases. Um, uh, basically, the cases are when the answers themselves are what they call rational numbers. Uh, and however, that being said, uh, completing the square will always work as long as there is a solution. Okay, so completing the square. So you can't always solve by factoring, but you can't. You should be able to solve by completing the square if there is a solution. So completing the square always works if there is a solution. All right, so. Um, uh, there will be times where there actually is no solution to a quadratic equation. That's the third option, okay? Uh, but I'm going to briefly explain to you what would happen. Uh, basically, over here in this step, I'm scrolling back here. In this step, when I moved this over and took the square root, if this number on the right-hand side is negative, uh, you can't take the square root of a negative number. Right? So that would be a case where there would be no solution. All right. Uh, so anyways, there's basically three ways to uh, three ways to divvy up or divide up or how to categorize these quadratic equations, right? Uh, one would be to be able to solve by factoring. And then if you solve by factoring, you can definitely solve by completing the square. The next category would be that you can't solve by factoring, but you can still solve by completing the square. And the third category is where there is no solution at all. All right. And that's when there's like a negative square root uh, in this step here. Okay. All right. So in this case, let's still give this a try. All right, we're going to still go and try this one uh, by completing the square. Okay, so I'm just going to write up the original here. So that's 2x squared minus 12x minus 7 equals 0. All right, so you try to factor it, can't factor it. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square here. Okay, so the first step when completing the square, factor out the 2. Get x squared minus 6x. And rather than closing bracket there, I'm just going to go to the next step. So I'm going to take the negative 6, divide it by 2, and square it to figure out what number I'm going to add and subtract. So this is negative 3 squared, which is positive 9. Okay, so inside the brackets here, add 9, subtract 9. Close the bracket. Still got the minus 7 equals 0. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to take the negative 9 out. But when I do that, I need to multiply by the leading coefficient, so I need to multiply that by 2. All right, so this would be 2x squared minus 6x plus 9. Close the bracket. Okay, so I have that negative 7 there. And then negative 9 times 2 is negative 18 equals 0. All right, so next up here, 2 bracket. This thing factored is x minus 3 uh, times x minus 3, which is x minus 3 squared. And then I have negative 25 equals 0. All right, so now I want to solve for x. I'm going to move the negative 25 over to the other side. So I got 2 bracket x minus 3 squared equals 25. All right. Uh, divide both sides by 2. These cancel. And I am left with x minus 3 squared uh, equals, uh, let's just go with decimals here. 12.5. All right. Um, so let me just fix this one here. This looks like an X here, right? So this, that was a two. Uh, just use a different color here. 
being canceled out. All right. Uh, all right. So once I get to this step here, I'm going to uh, take the square root of both sides. But again, when you square root it, it's both positive and negative. All right. So we got x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 12.5. And last step here, move the negative 3 over. So x is going to equal plus or minus the square root of 12.5 uh, plus 3. All right, so my first solution here would be x equals positive square root of 12.5 plus 3. And let's just see what that is as a decimal. Okay, so 12.5, take the square root of that. Add three. All right, so 6.535. Uh, let's just run to 6.54. All right, now the second one here would be x equals the negative square root of 12.5 plus 3. So x is going to equal. All right, so again, I'm going to take the square root of 12.5. but change it over to a negative. And then I'm going to add 3. All right, so we get uh, negative 0 0.54. All right, so these are our two solutions. Okay. Now, I just want to point out a couple things. Um, so again, if there is a solution, uh, the completely square method will work. Um, what you'll notice here is that these are actually irrational numbers, right? You see that there's no pattern to the decimal at all. It doesn't repeat or it doesn't terminate. So that's an indication that's what, what they call an irrational number. So if the solutions are irrational numbers, uh, then you can't actually solve by factoring. Okay. Factoring only works with question, with answers that are what they call rational numbers. Uh, so either the decimal will terminate, which means it stops, or it, there's a, like a repeating pattern to them. Right? Other than that, this it would be an irrational number so that you can't solve it by factoring, but you can still solve it by completing the square. All right, so let's go on to the last example here. Um, I'm going to solve this one here. And again, I'm going to go straight to completing the square. All right, so uh, first step here, just factor out the negative 3. So we got x squared plus 8x. All right. um, and also, I'm going to figure out what to add and subtract. So I'm going to add, let's see, 8 divided by 2 squared which is 4 squared, which is 16. So plus 16 minus 16. Close the bracket, and I got minus 50 equals 0. All right, so pull the negative 16 out. When you do that, you need to multiply it by the leading coefficient, which is negative 3. Okay, so we got negative 3 bracket x squared plus 8x plus 16. Close the bracket. Negative uh, 50, and let's see here, negative 16 times negative 3. It's positive 48 equals zero. All right, so this thing factored inside the brackets here. It's a perfect square. It's x plus 4 squared. All right, and here I got minus 2 equals zero. All right, so in this step here, now that we've exchanged it to vertex form, I'm going to isolate the x. I'm going to move the negative 2 over to the other side. So we get negative 3 bracket x plus 4 squared equals positive 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. So these cancel. And we got x plus, and we got x plus 4 squared equals negative 2 over 3. All right, so now what I'm going to do here is take the square root of both sides. Both positive, negative, positive, negative. All right, so at this point, you can see that we've got a bit of a problem, right? Because we've got to take the square root of a negative number, which is impossible to do. So once you get to this point, since this number here is negative, that means that there is no solution since we can't take the square root. of a negative number. 
All right, so what that means is that there is no solution to this equation. All right, which means that it is impossible to get a value here that we can plug in for X so that this whole thing is going to equal zero. All right, it's just impossible. There's no number that can you can plug in. Number does not exist. All right. Um, so therefore, all right, once you get to this stage, if you ever get to the stage where it's the square root of a negative number, then there is no solution. All right. Um, now, the other thing I want to kind of show you is uh, what this means in terms of uh, a graph graphically all right so i'm going to uh, this is kind of yeah what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to open up desmos i'm just going to show you exactly what's happening um graphically all right so let's go back to this equation here i just want to plug this in here so i'm going to plug and paste it all right, so there it goes. Perfect. All right, so basically what I did here is I just graphed this thing um, where, um, yeah, so this is the parabola that was uh, originally on the left hand side here. Okay, now it's asking you to solve this. So when is this thing equal to zero? All right, well, if you look at the graph, I'll go back to the graph, um, y equals zero is the x axis. Right to the blue line. So what you see here is that this parabola will actually never equal zero, right? Because zero is along here. It never crosses it. Okay. So that's why there is no solution. Yeah, so brick. So in terms of a graph, that's what this means, right? Uh, when does this thing equal to zero? Well, the parabola in red never crosses the blue line. So that's why there is actually no solution to this. All right. So that's a way to check graphically or through a graph. All right, cool. We'll, we'll do more on this kind of uh, uh, making the connection between graphs and uh, equations uh, in the next lesson as well. All right, guys. So that's uh, yeah, that's solving by completing the square. Ciao.